Is the Aussie dollar heading to 40 cents? Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your Stein of coffee and let's have a look at this article written by David Linwin smith for news.com.au warning that the Aussie dollar could hit 40 cents. But before we go through this, let's just jump over to trading economics so we can put that 40 cents into perspective. Right now, today, we're sitting at 63.719 US cents per Aussie dollar. So over the day, it's gone up. It's been a good day. Let's zoom out to a week here on trading economics. We can see, okay, over a week, oh, we're about, well, the start of the week. And it's, uh, sorry, I've got a tradie dropping off a material sample. I'm going to keep recording on his way. We can say we're about, you know, same with that. Not, not really much change. Up and down, up and down. Bit of, bit of drama. We go out to a month, okay? So we had a few peaks, peaks. You know, we're heading up, but we're definitely finishing lower in a month. Let's go six months. Come on. Is that six months? Oh, that changed to six months. There we go. Okay. So definitely, we're definitely lower than we were at the peaks. We're at nearly 70 cents a few times up there. Let's go further out again to a year. So a year, we're not at the lowest point in a year. We've been lower. Back in October 22, we were at 61 cents, but we're heading down towards that. What was the peak? 72 cents, looks, looks like. Now, let's go a bit further out to five years where we should capture all of the COVID mania where we went crashing down to 57 cents, went right back up to 78 cents, and we're just trending down. We're certainly trending down, or... The US dollar is getting stronger. Now let's go further out even again to 10 years time and we'll certainly see something interesting. Oh, wow. That that being a buck, $1 US or even over a dollar US, I didn't realize that was more than 10 years ago. I just suddenly felt old, guys. <laughs> Who remembers that? Now I remember because we bought a Kickstarter for a laser cutter and it just didn't happen or it took so long we could get a refund and I could I bought into it over a buck and I got a refund down here or somewhere later like a few years later but, but there we go I mean we still you know the lowest low was back here in COVID mania we go 25 years we can see here remember this early 2000s we were around 50 cents that would have been fantastic for everyone going to the Olympics you know all the great deals now if we go up to 50 years we can see there 50 years, 1974. I don't even think that's relevant anymore because it wasn't free moving. But you know, there you go, buck fifty crashing down. Let's go all the data. Is that all the data? There we go. They got a bit, a little bit more there. But okay, so concerns that we may be heading to 40 cents, and the last time we got close to that was in the year 2000. And uh, let's jump and have a look at this article. So. Warning, the Aussie dollar could drop to 40 cents to the US dollar. And that is going to have an impact because, let me bring up, oh, hang on, let's see if this, this will work. There we go. Let's bring up the Observatory of Economic Complexity. And while it loads up, we'll wait to see. The problem is if our dollar goes down, it means our purchasing power for foreign all of the imports, uh, it gets even well, worse. It means our ability to buy the imported foodstuffs that we eat, the petrol that we use. Building materials. Significant amount of building materials for the average Aussie house are imported. So we have a look here. Let's look at historic data. We can see these are our exports to where they're going. Let's look at, come on, I want our imports. Where are the imports? They changed this up. Have they changed it up? Or do I have to do something funny here? They've, they've changed it a little bit. Here we go. I've got to press here, import data. So you can see 10% of our imports. Oh, you can't see. Okay, let's... You know, I've been doing this for years. A well-polished uh, YouTube machine here, guys. You know, it's, it's, it's finely tuned. Here we, go. here we go. Bear with me. So you can see our biggest source of imports are from China, 10% from the US. Uh, we imported $251 billion with a number 24th trade destination in the world. This is in 2021. 
um, just until our biggest, uh, the most recent imports are refined petroleum, cars, delivery trucks, and computers, China, then the United States, then Japan. So all of these things that we import, everything here, will get more expensive. But also everything we export, including, well, could you say we export houses? Not really, but we kind of do. <laughs> they become more affordable to foreign buyers. Education becomes more affordable. Holidaying becomes more affordable. All of our natural resources, if they're priced in Aussie dollars, you'd assume most of the contracts are in USD, are more affordable. So it goes both ways. One way to deal with this, with this you know, fear of the purchasing power of our dollar going much lower, is simply to ensure you are earning money in US dollars. Now, I tried to do that with my, what was it, with PayPal money I was receiving, donations, payments, uh, Patreon. It was all in US dollars. And I set up a bank account with the ComBank to receive money in US dollars just so I could start building a little kitty of it over time. Problem was, PayPal will not send money to your country in any other currency other than your local country. So that kind of threw that out the window. The next best thing I'm doing is investing in US companies that pay dividends. So I get paid in US dollars. And you want to diversify not just your income streams, but the currencies that you're earning those income streams in. And that's one of the advantages we have nowadays that people couldn't do in the past. So let, let's have a look. So, I mean, just think about that. If the dollar crashes down to 40 cents, my dividends that are paid in US dollars have suddenly increased um, the amount of dollars I can get for it. And then I just need to wait until the purchasing power returns to normal. She'll be right, mate. So, economist and philosopher John Maynard, Maynard Keynes is famous for saying that markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. As the Aussie dollar plunges, oh, I mean, it, look, at, it's because he's looking at this long time, time frame. Today, it's fine. Aussie importers and international travellers must wonder if he was referring to them. The AUD is once again swooning towards new lows. And you have to remember, in some regards, the Aussie dollar is a proxy for the Chinese economy. In truth, the currency has been getting whipped for more than a decade. There have been ebbs and flows, some lasting years, but a pattern of lower highs has been intact since 2011. So, are the recent falls irrational? The answer lies in the respective, or sorry, in the relative prospects of, for our two great and powerful friends, the US and China. It's no coincidence that the AUD has almost perfectly tracked the rise and fall of uh, Chinese catch-up growth. From 2002, when China joined the World Trade Organization, the AUD rose considerably as China built a modern economy using Aussie commodities. It did so by siphoning off development market industrial complexities. Sorry, siphoning off developed market industrial complexities. So they, in turn, had weaker currencies versus the AUD. However, since 2011, that dynamic has reversed. Other developed markets have rebuilt industrial bases, while Australia has not. Well, yeah, that's, um, that's an interesting point. If we jump over here, we can see this with regards to economic complexity. Um, where is it? Oh, this is the big overview. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me bring this, this up here. Oh, it's been a while since we've shown this definition, guys. I can't find it here. But we can see here, I mean, this is our Australian economic complexity. And we are, um, what are we? Economic complexity of trade, we're ranked 82 in the world. For technology, we're ranked 13th. For research, we're ranked 4th in the world. So this is why you see, you know, for trade manufacturing, look, wool. That's our specialization, wool. Iron ore and sheep hides. Our most complex products are nickel bars, signal traffic control equipment machinery. And expert opportunities by relatedness. Uh, soybeans, crude petroleum, crude chromium ore. So there's some opportunities that have been identified for Australia, but you'll see why they're putting it all into medical research, things like that. that that's our advantage. We're not, uh, we're not a manufacturing country, guys. And just think about all the not-in-my-backyard crowds. How many of them would never want a bloody 
recycling factory near their house. They don't even they don't even want a medium density residence near their house. I mean, it's bloody Australia, guys. Developed economies like the US are once again becoming more de- de- divisive, self sufficient, and sophisticated. This has the flow and effect of lifting productivity and the labor share of income, which boasts growth and ultimately a currency. Conversely, Australia has chosen to grow its population via immigration rather than in its industrial base. This has the opposite effect. It weighs on wages, lifts import costs like land, and is disruptive as capital, machines, infrastructure, etc. is shallowed across more people. In effect, we're getting more people but less output per person as the economy gets less sophisticated. And you can see that in our GDP trends per capita, everyone. You can see here in this chart. This is GDP growth per capita. And see the trend line there? The majority of those since the GFC in Australia have been below the trend. So we're still growing. The numbers are still looking good. Everyone can still claim they're the ultimate politician. But per person, yeah, kind of, it's getting worse. Or the growth isn't as good. Uh, don't kid yourself into thinking that will make any, you know, any politicians will address that. It's not going to happen. Why use an efficient automated car wash when you can employ 20 unpaid workers to scrub your hubcaps? Because if you've talked to any car wash owner, which I did, I remember I, I went to a, a car wash in North Brizzy, just driving past, and the guy had a car wash that was automated and a uh, Domino's pizza that required a whole lot of delivery drivers. What business do you think he preferred? What one do you think he preferred? Bloody oath, the car wash. Didn't have to deal with people. The great superpower transition is still ongoing. China still has many years of slowing growth and diminishing investment. Its apartment infrastructure bust has just begun, leading to a further downside for Australian resource revenues. The Australian government's commodity forecaster, the office of the chief economist, is pulling no punches in this regards. I mean, they've they've been completely off the off the ball anyway with their forecast of expected revenue from natural resources. Iron ore is much higher than they anticipated and the government's reaping the rewards. Of course, they're not, they, they don't seem to be passing that on to any of us in lower taxes, but, you know, that we're just dumb plebs. Also, the U.S. industrial recovery is gathering steam for another surge in the next cycle. Its technology firms have seized leadership in artificial intelligence, guaranteeing uh, further capital deepening and sophisticated value-added growth. I'm skeptical about all the AI stuff, honestly, and it's going to be really easy uh, to copy. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if, it, if, it, if it's as revolutionary as people think. All of these revolutions that we seem to have... I remember, you know, 3D beam, no coordination issues, super fast, you'll have time to design and do all these wonderful things. Yeah, nah, just means you work more and faster and harder. That's, I think that's what the AI is going to be. It'll, it'll be a staple, an addition to your toolkit that you use. I mean, if, there's going to be some jobs that will be replaced, 100%, but um, a multivariant, very complex problem that changes per unique situation i don't know if it can deal with it it can just regurgitate waffle and crap so think about you know if you're worried about your your job getting replaced you know ask specific questions of these ai applications and test them and you'll find they're useless it's it's i think it's great for baller plate and bullshit work so all the bullshit jobs a lot of just the the template stuff it can replace anyway so the two forces that brought Brought the Aussie dollar down from 111 to today's 63 cents are ongoing. And heaven forbid, maybe pricing for a conflict between the two, in which weak Chinese growth triggers outward aggression and the US industrial strength fights it off. In effect, the shifting relativities of superpowers risk keep, keeps sending the AUD lower, encouraging Australia to diversify its industrial base but Canberra refusing to take yes for an answer, preferring to grow the population. An AUD with a four in front of it may be needed to deliver the message. So there we go. And he's a chief strategist for MB Fund and MB Super. What do you reckon, guys? Let's have a bit of a chat about this one. Do you think we're going to see a 40 cents Australian dollar? I mean, I honestly don't think we will. 
I think there'll be more uh, stimulus overseas before we see that, and that'll increase demand for our natural resources. But as I said, you want to diversify your income in not just jobs and positions, but also in currencies. I've just I just sold a, a chunk of uh, my silver holdings and increased some more dividend paying shares today. So there you go. So if now if silver goes to the moon, you can thank me, silver bros. Okay, all good. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Check out Heiser Be More Heiser Does for other content I create. And if you're a fan and want to support us, you can on YouTube or Patreon. Use the referral links, buy the pocket squares, or call me if you need an architect. Take care. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. <laughs>